Yesterday, I mentioned that the PE for the S&P 500 was at 21.57 using the estimated non-GAAP earnings, which is sometimes called operating earnings, for the next 12 months. I found that number at the Wall Street Journal market data page. I do not independently try to verify that. I noted that was high in my comment by historical standards, which it unquestionably is. The problem is how far back in time can I now go to extrapolate a historically normal PE or fair value PE for the S&P 500 using either the uh, trailing 12-month GAAP EPS or the forward 12-month estimated non-GAAP EPS. J.P. Morgan recently published data on the S&P 500 valuation measure using the forward P.E. ratios. The 30-year average, which would start in 1993 through 12 31 uh, 23 was 16.59, or about 23% below the current number. Can I say now that 16.59 is a fair value number for the S&P 500. For the S&P to hit a 16.59 uh, PE ratio using forward 12-month estimated earnings, the index would have to fall about 1,100 points to 3,670 or so. That would take the index roughly back to where it was in October 20. Uh, I do not get excited by those kind of drops anymore. Um, I just take it in stride. I would be interested in uh, increasing my stock allocation after that 1,100 point drop since it provides more of a margin of safety and important consideration for the conservative old greaser crowd who, whose main focus are whose main focus may be income generation with capital preservation, which is where I'm at. Having uh, made that point about historical averages, I would not become too reliant on what was an average for, forward PE number that includes data prior to around 2005. And the reason has to do with higher than normal profit margins and the durability of those profit margins which so far to me looks like they've entered into a much higher and longer historical, with a longer duration uh, historical range. That profit margin is the uh, net income number as a percentage of revenues, or put it another way, uh, the percentage of profit that a company earns from its revenues. Excluding recessionary periods, the profit margin of the S&P 500 prior to 2005 was meandering mostly in the 4 to 6 percent range, with occasional short-term bursts slightly higher or lower than that range. Starting in 2005, net pro profit margins entered into a new range of 7 to 11 percent with temporary higher or lower numbers, excluding the two-year period during the 2008-2010 Near Depression period. So what is, what is happening here? The companies that have come to dominate the S&P 500 have far higher net profit margins than the companies did uh, in, in the this more distant past. Uh, just taking some uh, trailing 12-month uh, net profit margin figures for some of the uh, dominant companies today. Uh, I found that uh, Microsoft has a 35.31% net profit margin. Alphabet is at 22.46. NVIDIA at 42.9%. Meta Platforms is at 24.61%. And Apple is at 25.31%. Prior to uh, 1990 or 2000, the S&P 500 was dominated by heavy uh, industrial companies whose profit margins were generally in the 4 to 8% range. 
and were not durable at that point, uh, since they were far more sensitive to economic cycles than the dominant companies uh, today. An example uh, is General Motors, uh, whose TTM profit margin is now at 5.73 percent. Compare that to Microsoft or Nvidia or Alphabet or Meta or, or any of these large companies that dominate the averages today. The profit margins of the S&P 500 companies have uh, become more durable in a higher range, is the way I would put it. Uh, so higher valuations are justified. Uh, you and I would not use a 16.59 PE ratio as a fair valuation for the S&P 500. The question is how much higher is, is justified by this new trend. My gut tells me that 18 to 20 is about right during an economic expansion with 16 to 18 providing more of a comfort for old geezers Oh, geezers who want a greater margin of safety, recognizes, recognizing that uh, recessions and bear markets will come along and want a, a, a higher degree of safety than investing at uh, a 20 PE 